Welcome visitors and subscribers. Today in Monet Cafe, we're gonna be talking about unlocking the mysteries of color. And today's segment on this is analogous color. I hope to start a little series on more about color. And it's true that color is uh, makes our world brighter and more beautiful, but as artists, we need to learn the rules. And uh, you can even paint the sky green when you do. <laughs> so today, let's talk about color and we're going to use our handy dandy pocket color wheel. Now this color wheel is pretty much a standard uh, across multiple mediums for artists to use on color and color rules and using color and making your paintings harmonious with color. But it's actually not the true color wheel. And that's something I'll go into next lesson. Here's a little teaser. So, but anyway, today we're using the pocket color wheel. And on that color wheel, we'd see many different descriptions of how to use color and arrange your palette. And one of these is analogous color. And in this tutorial, I give four different examples of doing a painting with different analogous color palettes. So all it is really is using your color wheel, picking out colors that are next to each other. In some of the examples, I use two to three colors. And in one, I think I do almost half of the color wheel, as in this case here. Now for this first example, I'm really just using my sketch as one of the examples of analogous color. I'm using new pastels, which are harder pastels. Uh, I got a set of 96 at a really good sale price a while ago, and I love them because they're great for sketching and they work well on smooth surfaces. So if you don't have any sanded paper around or whatever for what we usually use for pastel paintings, uh, new pastels, actually, I use them in a sketchbook, um, just regular paper. Uh, so they work well. I put behind my artwork or my painting um, a piece of newsprint so that I can make color notes and make little sketches like I'm doing here. Sometimes I work out composition uh, elements and, and um, trying to just get things right before I commit to my sanded paper or whatever surface I'm using. So you can see here I'm using various um, colors of new pastels, but they're all in that analogous color range that I showed right before starting this. Um, now I did veer over a little bit more into some of the yellowy greens all the way over to the teal blues and purples. So this is a very wide analogous color range. And I am again a little limited because this is just newsprint, but I got a little carried away, started having fun with color which I just can't help myself. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy this little example, and then we'll get to the next analogous color uh, palette or choices that I've made, and you'll see that you can change the whole mood of your painting by what color choices you make. I got a little more into that sketch than I normally do, got carried away. But now moving on to the next analogous color, I'm basically just flipping the color wheel over. Now I'm using the warmer side, focusing more on the pinks, oranges, yellows. And here's my pastel choices. I pretty much have them in color families vertically according to value. It makes it easy for me when I'm uh, choosing pastels. Now I'm using a piece of U art paper. That's just the letter U A R T. It's a sanded paper. And if you have never tried sanded papers as a pastel artist, that was when my world changed <laughs> when it came to pastel painting. I had no idea. Um, and I think that's my heart and passion for making these videos is to give you guys some information that um, that will make it easier for you as a pastel artist. Now I'm using the basic rules I talk about in a lot of my videos going um, values are typically darker in the foreground. They get lighter, paler, and duller in the background. Um, trees, of course, anything vertical in a painting or in a landscape is typically darker. Um, things that are flat are typically lighter, like the grass, because the sun's shining on them. Now that was just a piece of pipe foam insulation, which you can get at any hardware store. I've been using this little piece for a long time. Um, it's basically just a blending tool. Sometimes uh, I like to soften the painting and um, it gives a different mood and, and kind of gets rid of that chunkiness. You kind of just blend it all in. And um, I, uh, 
notice I'm wiping it off after you know, like using it on a dark area because I don't want to smear that dark area like on these grasses where I'm using it right now so you know I wanted to mention too that this particular color palette uh, of analogous warm colors works great as an underpainting if you've seen some of my underpainting videos uh, it's really good to do a warm underpainting by the way I have a whole playlist section on our YouTube channel here if you go to the playlist you can find videos by certain categories easier in the playlist tab so you can go and find uh, videos on color videos on underpaintings learn what is an underpainting and why do you do it but again this is a nice warm underpainting palette to use for landscape um, paintings typically so I'm just rolling right along here, basically just having fun. These are more studies than they are paintings and uh, more of a learning tool. Um, sorry for the light change here though. But um, again, playing around, getting creative with color. And I encourage playing. Uh, you get too serious too quickly and uh, you're not gonna grow as an artist as much as if you just goof off some and make some mistakes and work on some cheap surfaces and, and just have fun, you know? Um, Sometimes we, we set goals to like be an artist and sell paintings and sometimes just the process is uh, more um, uh, rewarding than any profit that we could make for selling a painting. So that's my two cents worth. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so this was pretty much it for the warm color, analogous color palette. And uh, after this painting, I'm gonna move on to a cooler color palette okay so we got to the right there the first one was more of your traditional landscape colors with the greens over to the yellows and some blues and then the warmer now we're going cooler with blues and purples after this one So that was fun. Now let's move on to using more of the blues, violets, and blue violets um, for a cooler, um, well, it's, it's cool moving over to some of the warmer purples. And uh, it's gonna, again, this is gonna be a whole nother different mood. These are my pastels. I don't add a whole lot more to them than these, maybe a few more. But again, I have them kind of according to value and color family. And there's a couple of neutrals that I use in the kind of purple and pink um, color family so um, and this is going to be pretty much the same idea I don't even include the reference one here because you, you kind of get the idea <laughs> but um, also too I like to mention that I recently started adding the reference photos that I use as long as they're my own reference photos and not one that I got from um, like paint my photo website or whatever I'm trying to use all of my own reference photos now but when they're my own reference photos I'm going to include them for your use however you want to use them on um, my website susanjenkinsfineart.com the very first tab on susanjenkinsfineart.com is uh, a tab that says as seen in Monet Cafe and when you click on that it's going to show you a little thumbnail of the video and a little icon where you can click to download um, the reference photo that I use. So if you wanna to try to paint along with my painting and you can't see it too good in the video when I have it like on the side of my painting there, that way you can use it. I've had people ask if they can use it for um, do a painting and then sell their painting. And yes, if I put it there, you can use it for whatever you wanna use it for. So anyway, you can see here I'm using a combination of the cooler blues, some of the warmer purples, um, just for a neat, uh, cool, moody feeling. Um, this would be, I, I would say, more of a peaceful feeling. Something about cooler colors make us feel more peaceful and uh, warm red colors are more dramatic. And uh, I went in a restaurant, the, where was I? I was with my husband and we went somewhere where everything was red 
And it really, it just kind of made you feel a little anxious and want to get out of there. <laughs> so I actually heard a long time ago that a lot of fast food restaurants, uh, like uh, here in the States, Burger King, McDonald's, all that, they don't do it anymore, but they used to always have warm colors for the de decor, like reds and oranges. And um, and the, the idea, or what I had heard anyway, it makes sense, was to get people in and out real quick. <laughs> you don't want to hang out where everything's all bold red but anyway red has its place i love reds too so all right let's finish this little one up and then we're going to move on to a green and yellow color palette For painting number four, I got a little bored with that uh, uh, reference image, so I'm using another one. It's the same view out my front door, but a little different composition. I have more sky in this one and less grass. So again, these photos, both of the reference photos, I think I can share both on the same little thumbnail on my website, susanjenkinsfineart.com, as seen on Monet Cafe section, you can get the reference photo. Now here's my greens, there's the color wheel. I'm using mostly just these three adjacent green and yellow green colors, moving over a little into cooler greens on the right there. And um, you can see again, I have them kind of by color family and value. I've got the warmer greens in the middle and the cooler ones to the right. They're kind of in, in, um, in line with the color wheel. Okay, so it makes it really easy to work when you have them already picked out and you have them um, kind of laid out like this. All right, not only have I used different color palettes of analogous color, I'm using different surfaces as well. Oh, my hands are dirty. Um, this one, pardon my hands in this if it doesn't match my voice, I decided to do a voiceover. This is Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer Soft Umber Color. And I love making my own surfaces with this. I used a foam brush to apply it that makes it really smooth, but you can use a, sometimes I use a bristly brush that gives more texture to it, but I applied this simply to a piece of like mixed media paper, you know, kind of like a cardstock type of paper, but this is a great product and it's a great surface to work on. All right, now, so I did a little sketch again because this is a different composition and uh, I'm using my lighter values for the sky and uh, kind of having fun with some different warmer and cooler values in the sky. I'm kind of making the cooler values more like the clouds and the lighter values more like the sky. Um, this, uh, that was, uh, I think, just a, a new pastel that I used for the green there that I, I brushed in a little bit. And uh, again, you kind of get the idea now. You've seen four of the, the this is the fourth one. <laughs> so you get the idea of the composition and kind of my uh, method of operation. Um, but notice I use that cooler green for those background trees. And it's a lighter value because it's in the background. And, um, you know, I'm just gonna paint along a little bit on this one. And like I said on, in our Facebook group and a couple other place, places I shared this, um, yes, the sky can be green. <laughs> I've actually seen in real life where a sky had a little bit of a green uh, tint to it, which was really neat. The skies are amazing in Florida and, I, and many other places in the world. I love how in our Monet Cafe art group on Facebook that, wow, what a blessing. We get to see people and paintings from everywhere all over our beautiful earth. So if you haven't joined that group, do so. It's fun. You learn a lot. Lots of nice people. Nobody ever has to feel intimidated if you're brand new. So come on and join the fun. Come on over to Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. All right, we're going to finish this little painting up and then see all of them together. And uh, I apologize if I've sounded a little punchy or different in this video. This is literally my fourth time trying to upload this video. I'm working on a pretty antiquated MacBook Pro. I bought it used. Um, and, uh, you know, you know how life goes. Sometimes you just can't afford those big purchases, and that's a lot. Not only do I have to buy the, the computer, I have to buy all of the software, like Photoshop and the movie editing software. So, um, so just... Uh, uh, say a prayer for me. I just applied for an artist grant in my county that uh, if I get the grant, it'll help me some and, and I'll be able to continue these videos. But anyway, this was fun. Here we go. Let's look at the final four paintings. I'm about to finish this little thing up. And uh, I am so grateful for each and every one of you. 
and this really does feel like a family we have here. So here we go. Here's the four final analogous color, well actually the three, including the Mr. Color Wheel there. My other sketch one was on the board, but um, that was the Sennelier Le Carte board. This is the UART paper that this one was done on. And the final one is the one that was done using the Color Fix uh, Primer, Art Spectrum Color Fix Primer. So they all have their different uh, benefits to them. I hope you learned a lot. This was a pretty all-inclusive video. Stay tuned for the one that's coming up with more Unlocking the Mysteries of Color. Thanks so much, guys. Happy painting.